Chicago that teach at this uh, school, Columbia is a school. They teach the classes on the course strategy and also the governance uh, module. And I'm sharing the position of co-director with Sandra Navali for the uh, Center for Ethics and Leadership. And every year we give out a prize, uh, the Benjamin Buckwinick Prize uh, for an outstanding leader in ethics. Uh, it's a prize which is uh, quite a few uh, notable people uh, awarded earlier, uh, including uh, folks like uh, Jeff Inmelt from, uh, from GE or uh, Peter Bloom from Matrios Bank, who won this uh, last year. Uh, the process uh, goes through uh, student nominations uh, with the Student uh, Leadership Ethics Board playing a very important uh, role in this, uh, in this selection. Um, and they come up with a list of folks who they think would be good, good leaders. Uh, and we uh, look at them and uh, we say, you know, well, can we possibly bring these people in? There's always a challenge to uh, bring in busy people. So this year, a uh, name which came up was uh, Mikhail Olson from uh, IKEA. And we had the great fortune that he said yes to us. <laughs> we, we love that, because it's your choice. And also, uh, we get to uh, have the honor to, uh, to host uh, to host him here. Um, Iki is known to all of you. I won't say too much uh, about this. Uh, uh, and uh, Iki will tell you more about the company uh, when, he, when he talks. Uh, but uh, I, uh, we, we talked earlier on the phone about what uh, might be reasonable things to, to discuss. Um, and one of the comments which came back was, uh, you know, uh, usually we're a pretty quiet company. We don't really talk too much about the things we, you know, we do. Um, and uh, we kind of joke because I, I have a, a connection to, to Sweden, and so you, you know that having uh, talked with for a few years and other, other friendly connections as well. And it's true, they're very quiet people, uh, generally. Uh, until they get really excited. <laughs> and then they get really excited, they get really excited. So you have these amazing people who are performing at TED and other, other places who talk about the things which they, which they do. Um, but IKEA has been perhaps on the quieter side of things. And it's a great story. Uh, it's a story which uh, you know, deserves to be told about entrepreneurship from a pretty small region of, uh, of, uh, of Sweden, which didn't have a lot of natural uh, resources uh, to be the foundations of a great, great company. Um, articulated a very Swedish strategy early on, and never lost that too much, and uh, it's moved on to be a leader in a uh, furniture segment, which no one said could possibly be global. How can you be global in furniture when you can't transport the stuff, and you, the tastes are different around the world, and some countries it's cheaper to, to hire someone to make your furniture than it is to actually go to the store to, uh, to buy it. So this was kind of an initial story, and then the, story, the company has moved on uh, to the issues of sustainability, uh, which Mikhail has really been the driver uh, for this. Uh, he's been with the company uh, for, uh, since he was a, a college student uh, back in Linshipping uh, University, uh, studying engineering and, uh, and industrial um, uh, applications engineering to things like transportation and, and materials. Uh, and these ideas have now become the cornerstone of the of the corporate social responsibility, which is broader than just sustainability, but especially to their sustainable uh, activities. Um, but I promise I wouldn't tell you too much about this. It's really his story. So let's welcome Mikhail Ossin up to the uh, podium. Okay. Okay. We have to do one official thing. Oh. I almost forgot. Oh. But, uh, this is not. IKEA uh, furniture because you can't assemble this <laughs> can't assemble easily this crystal, uh, but it's uh, to represent our thanks for you coming here and the honor you uh, you have bestowed on us to accept this award. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, I'm very happy and honored to be here today uh, to meet with you and. Um, received the uh, Botwitiki Prize on behalf of, uh, of uh, all co-workers at IKEA all over the world uh, and my predecessors. Uh, I see this as a, a reward or award for many years uh, work along uh, the same direction and the same lines to create a better everyday for the many 
people. And that's the vision uh, and the way that it's formulated for IKEA. To side with the people, what's good for people is also good for us in the long run. Yeah, already in those two core sentences, you, you have uh, words that give endless uh, opportunities in a way, and also a lot of responsibility. IKEA has uh, grown uh, through um, evolution, and uh, that evolution has been guided by our vision and also the business idea. So that was formulated many years ago uh, by the founder of IKEA, Ingvar Kampa. He is uh, today 85 years old. Uh, he's uh, still a source of inspiration in big and small. Uh, now he's serving as a senior advisor. Um, business ethics um, is a matter of all of for all of us working in IKEA. Uh, we are really passionate about creating a successful business, but uh, where we do it in a responsible way. Uh, it's a way of being. I'd have to say that all of us in IKEA and most of our uh, uh, partners and customers want IKEA to be a leader in uh, being a good contributor in the home, of course, but also larger than that in society as a whole. We are not perfect. Uh, we have made mistakes and still we will do it today and we will do it tomorrow. But uh, the never compromising thought is really that we uh, want to do our best to contribute to a better everyday life. I thank you for recognizing IKEA through the prize and uh, it really stimulates us uh, when we move on in the future. For because we are still only in the beginning of our journey. IKEA is really small. Uh, <laughs> when you look at uh, the needs and the dreams of people all over the world of your beautiful um, functional home and that's so affordable. Uh, we still only have IKEA stores in a few uh, markets and uh, that even though uh, it seems like there is an appeal to our offer almost everywhere. Um, and we also find that the, the more society is changing, sometimes to the good and sometimes to the worse, we find uh, that our um, vision and our idea is becoming more relevant. Uh, I've been, uh, as you said, Bruce, I've been with IKEA now 32 years. Actually, I worked with Bruce White in the uh, store in Linköping uh, th uh, many, many years ago. She was in the textile department and I was in the carpet department. Uh, the last, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the last uh, uh, 16 uh, years I've been in the executive management of IKEA. But uh, uh, all um, years I've spent most of my time uh, on the floors in our different realities together with pe people. And uh, um, the feeling is like IKEA is new every day. It's like a new company because it's a constant change. Uh, the most common feelings is frustrations. Why can we not do this better? We should be able to do things better. But also, um, inspiration and motivation because we know that we can do what we do today even better tomorrow. Uh, and uh, I think one driver for that is that we really fa face reality. Uh, all of us are really working with a real situation uh, and uh, don't rely so much on fancy, fancy presentations uh, or reports. Because uh, in the reality, we see you automatically see the equivalent opportunities, and that is uh, enormously stimulating and it uh, empowers. I believe it's not only me that has this uh, feeling. Uh, today, 131,000 people, 4,000 more than last year. And uh, I think many can recognize themselves in that uh, experience. In our stores, uh, among our designers, uh, our range people, product developers, in the distribution centers in our purchasing organization, but also at our suppliers and at our offices. So why is it so? I think it has to do with the vision, uh, with our business idea and about the culture and the values and the richness of our business model. Um, as you will notice today, IKEA cover quite a lot uh, of different fields and I will try to describe them and link them to ethics directly or indirectly. I will not say so much about the stores and the marketing because I 
Yes, that some of you are familiar. How many of you have been to IKEA ever? Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the marketing, and you see that we need to improve the website. And, uh, <laughs> and um, uh, so I thought I would mention a little bit what's be be beyond um, obvious. Um, but the best would be if you could experience uh, it yourself, because uh, this is uh, really just just words. But I will talk about our vision. Um, that uh, and that is the strongest motivator to create a better everyday life for the many, and it guides in home furnishing, but also looking wider at our role in society, locally, and also globally, and it gives opportunities, but it also gives responsibility. I will talk about our business idea. It's formulated uh, to g offer a wide range of well-designed home furnishing items at so low prices that as many people as possible can afford to buy them. Um, to give people with normal incomes the opportunity to furnish in a beautiful and nice way. Uh, or wider to see that the equation, uh, low price and um, good quality is possible. I will talk about our uh, people and our values because IKEA is created by people. And uh, our values, the culture, what we call the IKEA spirit, is the glue that keeps us together and create a foundation for us in the way we do our business. It's really just about mo modern down-to-earth people that want to do a good job and contribute to IKEA to be a modern, good company. And then I will talk about our business model. Because we don't see ourselves as a retailer only, or an investor. Even though we have stores and we invest a lot, we see ourselves as a home furnishing company with a vertically integrated value chain where we try to uh, deliver exceptional value to the customers by cutting unnecessary costs out of the system. Because a low price can never be negotiated or never be squeezed or out or it can never be created by misusing nature or people. No price always have to be created in order to be sustainable and long-lasting. So if you would uh, define one DNA of IKEA, it is really to find a solution to have very low cost throughout the system. And I believe that uh, sustainable, uh, successful companies and organizations of the future will be vision-driven will be idea-based and will be value-driven. Uh, organizations with a meaningful purpose and uh, that attract good people. And um, I believe that good companies contribute in society uh, in many parts of the, of the world. So um, th uh, that's a little bit what I will talk about, but maybe first a couple of words more about IKEA. Bruce, you mentioned it. IKEA is coming from Småland in the south of Swede, uh, uh, Sweden, and you, you are very familiar with that. Uh, Småland is the, uh, used to be the most poor region. It's stones, it's uh, big forests, and a lot of people uh, emigrated to the US in the, in the 19th century, many to min Minnesota, but most stayed. And the people in Småland they are known to be hardworking, fine, uh, practical uh, solution on things. They don't give up and are quite stubborn. Roll up the sleeves, get to work. And uh, in the old days, it was necessary to work together. Many entrepreneurs have come out of Småland because uh, thriftiness and to be ingenious was sort of uh, uh, incredibly important to make a living. And uh, this combination with a no-nonsense approach uh, and very hand-on uh, people has led to actually quite a lot of companies coming out of the Småland region. Most of all, they economize with resources. To waste was the worst sin. People simply had, uh, had very little means. And um, that is the way, same way as it is for most people in the world today. Uh, much of this has influenced our culture and formed the base for our thinking also around uh, our range and sustainability. 
Uh, then Ikeg grew up in the 20th century in Sweden. I don't know how familiar you are with that, really, but th there was a very strong s social development in uh, Sweden over the last 100 years. Early democratization, dramatic improvement in li living uh, situations, women's rights and childcare rights for everybody, good health systems, the Dure form, it was called, uh, it's uh, that everybody said, he said you and the first name to everybody, which is common in North America, I think, but in mo many countries, it was not like that. I yeah, hear you say Mr. as well. <laughs> but uh, it was really to meet people with respect, one on one, independent on, on what role in society you have. And um, uh, th this together with um, a thinking uh, formulated by a fo famous author, uh, Ellen, uh, Ellen um, Kay, about beauty for everybody, that the normal the income people should be able to afford beauty, that it shouldn't be the rich uh, only, and that the function and the inside of a product and a person is more important than a glossy surface. Uh, was also developed in this period. All of this influenced IKEA. But then over the last few years, uh, and the last decades, I would say, we have uh, gradually moved into more uh, new countries, and we have continued to learn and develop together with our co-workers and with our partners and our customers. And uh, now we try to inspire people how you can uh, furnish a small apartment in uh, Pudong in uh, outside of Sh Shanghai, where we have our one of our latest new stores, uh, or in the suburb of, of Chicago. And every time we do that, we gain new insights. So today you can say that IKEA has the roots in Småland. We are quite distinct IKEA, but we have an accent of uh, Italian in Italy and an accent of Chinese in China. And through that, uh, we, we try to be locally relevant but also have a clear identity and take the obvious scale advantages of being globally. We have grown step by step since 1943, and today we have about 300 stores in the world, uh, 131,000 co-workers, as I said, as I said uh, which sold for about 25 billion euro uh, last or this year that ended uh, a few months ago. And we have about 600 million visitors in the store, uh, soon a billion on the website, so it has to be uh, uh, developed, I think. Um, but we uh, expand with uh, North America, and that was quite uh, slow. Uh, and there is a quite uh, clear reason for that, um, because uh, we don't have to show anybody how fast we can grow. Uh, we are not on the stock exchange. Instead, we focus always on ta taking care of our existing customers as good as we can. We invest tremendously in our existing stores, and we want to have the culture and the values and the competence and the leadership uh, so strong that we don't grow faster than that. And uh, not least, we want to build long-term quality, low-price capacities so that we can offer the good price everywhere where we go. Uh, since the um, early 80s, um, IKEA is owned by a foundation, Stichting Inca Foundation. And the purpose of that is that uh, it's a closed system to safeguard IKEA's future. Uh, it is means that we can um, finance our expansion largely with our own means. And um, uh, which makes it very, very stro uh, strong for us uh, because we, we, have we can go against the stream, you can say. We don't have to look at the how the different markets uh, look. Uh, actually, we can, can they go faster than, than uh, especially in bad times, we increase the pace a little bit. Um, since a couple of years, um, we uh, make an annual report some that describes our financial uh, situation. And, uh, we also uh, have a sustainability report that describes a lot of the same as sustainability work we do. So uh, what we will not talk about today, you can read about um, on the web. The main reason that we do that is really that all our co-workers should know how do we use our funds and how do we invest for the future. Okay, that's a little bit as a backdrop uh, coming into uh, the main uh, four points. Uh, Creating a better everyday life for the many. 
Yeah, uh, of course, it's home furnishing, uh, as I mentioned, but also it's um, uh, our ca uh, customers uh, in their homes. It's our own uh, co-workers. We want to offer an environment at work that is uh, unique and that is very strong. It means that uh, we ensure good working condition for workers at our suppliers, good environmental standards in and around the factories. And we take an um, active approach around climate change, uh, forestry and the way cotton is grown. Uh, it may, means that we are always trying to make more out of less and uh, use a new and effective way to distribute and produce. Uh, also to produce energy, uh, energy and thereby, by th uh, thereby to economize on scarce resources on Earth. For, for us, it also means to uh, support uh, many people that has the least through the community involvement that we do, um, where we focus on children uh, through our local units, but also uh, through Care Foundation. And I will describe a little bit more in, uh, about that in a second. Everything, everywhere we, where we go, we expect um, that our contributions sh shall always be on the highest e ethics uh, standards. Of course, we have systems and methods. We have codes of conduct. We have risk management and to ensure uh, that things are in order, like in, in uh, most other companies. However, the most important is the culture. And it's uh, built on what you can say, just decent human common sense. And uh, I will describe a little bit about our values and, and about our cultures. The way we describe them is enthusiasm, constant will to renew, honesty, cost consciousness, simplicity, willingness to assume responsibility, togetherness, facing reality, willpower but combined with humbleness, leadership by example, and a few more. Um, these values are influencing everything that we do, our way of being and interacting, also with our customers and with our suppliers. We work together and talk to each other in an informal, straightforward, honest and inclusive way. We are against prestige, hierarchy, power games. We are against status symbols and all sorts of show-offs. We used to uh, down to earth way of dressing, except today we put on the <laughs> 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 honor uh, the award and uh, to be together with you. Uh, we use simple words to say what we mean and try to stay out of fancy consultancy lingo. <laughs> That's <laughs> often, <laughs> often uh, more excludes people than include people. Instead, we respect competence and capability and want to influence to be built on that. So capability becomes the leadership in IKEA, independent of level. We admit mistakes, we take up bad things first, and we are always ready to learn new things. It's quite interesting uh, in meetings when uh, all the bad things are coming first, you should try that once. Um, we always recruit based on our values and uh, we live by them. Um, and it's important to say maybe at, that we find people that share our values and passion all over the world. So it has nothing to do, do with the uh, um, place of birth. And uh, we've also learned that there is a small land almost in all countries. We have learned that um, values is something that people have with them or I an inside uh, ourselves. And only with difficulties change um, competence and capability can be acquired and the values they are um, valid for all of us independent of role or responsibility young and old uh, new and old timer uh, CEO or salesperson uh, sometimes that sometimes surprise people when we recruit middle-aged people from uh, with careers from uh, other companies uh, is it for me as well? But as for us, it is for everybody. It's leadership by example. Togetherness uh, is a central value in the IKEA culture and uh, where we try to, to create an environment where people can be themselves and uh, where people feel included, welcome and trusted, even loved for who they are. 
like a family. An environment where people work together, support and uh, inspire each other, often with big passion. And uh, that we as co-workers are transparent in the sense that we are, I am uh, what I am at work and also at home. So it's the same person. We see life balance um, as important and uh, natural. We all go through different phases in life. It also means that diversity is essential to view people's different backgrounds and perspectives as an asset. Then we become richer, both as human beings and in our job. So we value people independent, of course, of gender and age and uh, sexual orientation or ethnic background, uh, whatever. And even though we are not satisfied, uh, I can mention that, that, that out of our, we have 17,000 managers uh, in IKEA, and a majority are women, and our to top uh, 200 uh, leaders, uh, about 40% uh, are women. I think that this has been an enormous uh, uh, strong development that uh, serve us uh, and creates a very, very um, inspirational environment and we look through that from more different angles than, than uh, in the old days. In IKEA, our co-worker uh, co every year say the meaning I in a co-worker sur uh, survey that complement uh, the daily dialogue where we identify improvement potentials uh, for each unit um, and for IKEA as a whole. The scores are normally quite good, and you just had one, Mike, in, in uh, IKEA in the US. And, uh, but there is always room uh, for improvement. We are often voted as uh, one of the best places to work at, and we are proud of that. And uh, we think that's also very good because uh, uh, it gives good prerequisites when we want to open a new store. Normally, we employ about four or 500 people in a new store, and we can have 35, 40, 45,000 applicants. Uh, to, to the new stores. Uh. But it's only not only inclusiveness from an internal point of view. Uh, we also uh, embrace the world around us. Uh, try to listen, being open to influence. I uh, mentioned to you that, that what I hope to get a return today, but more than questions at the end. There's also some good advice how we can learn and how we can develop for, uh, further. Because being receptive to people around us we can get inspiration to learn and become better in the future. We also seek suppliers uh, who we ha have a strategic fit and uh, share our overall thinking, being long-term, build a trust and relation, have a common view on the business ethics, social and environmental subju subjects. Our suppliers are enormously important for development of IKEA and uh, they're often seen as good progressive examples in their local regions. In many cases, together uh, we lead the development of our industry uh, and to modernize the industry uh, also in the fields of the environmental and social standards. A few words on a couple of the other uh, uh, values. Willingness to accept and delegate responsibility is a fundamental on our view of uh, delegating uh, or developing uh, our co-workers. All co-workers in IKEA are expected to um, assume responsibility and not to uh, take decisions and not to ask a supervisor. It's uh, what makes people grow. By nature, it also makes us make mistakes. Uh, for us, that's only a sign of healthiness. If we don't make any mistakes, we probably do too little. But what's important then is uh, to uh, accept the mistakes, uh, admit them, and then uh, to uh, learn and correct and try not to make the same mistakes several times. Um, and then to move on. Another I mentioned is cost consciousness and thriftiness, uh, to economize with limited resources. A low price company needs to have uh, low costs, it's by nature. It's uh, about cre creating our range, uh, but it's as much as uh, also to, to um, uh, have a concern with Earth's limited resources. We build environmental thinking into our products uh, and lower our prices on the most important innovative products that save the environment in order to make them affordable to more people. Quite the contrary than what uh, most people would do. That way, we together with our customers contribute. 
whether it's about saving water in a small smart water tab that only use 30% of the water, or if it's uh, to have, have use an induction hub instead of a traditional uh, stove is constant. Uh, where 80% uh, is going up into the f uh, of the energy is used for the food. Or if it's uh, about uh, having a table uh, with a hollow inner, um, consuming less wood uh, and less CO2 uh, emissions in the transportation. And uh, by that, the trucks can be filled. Uh, and uh, we, of course, uh, save both money and we see save uh, CO2 footprint. Uh, we did a swift change from the um, incandescent uh, lamps into low energy lighting and uh, now into LED lighting. Uh, that has made our customers save energy equivalent to numerous uh, nuclear power plants, actually. Uh, we also uh, make significant investment in uh, production of renewable energy. It's uh, one way to contribute to a low carbon society. Uh, we have the last year decided to buy uh, wind parks in Germany, France, Poland, UK and in Sweden. These windmills uh, will produce about 13% of the energy um, uh, or electricity use that we have in the company. We also decided now the last year to put uh, solar uh, installations on uh, so far, 120 of our stores and a number of our uh, uh, distribution centers, uh, 30 here in the US, uh, which means that the, the DCs, for instance, can be totally off the grid uh, and have uh, more or less the whole, or in some cases, the whole energy use uh, produced by the, the panels on the, on the roof. We expect that this year about 50% of our energy consumption will be from renewable energy sources, but our goal is that we should come to 100%. Um, we use uh, sustainability as a driver of innovation and transformation uh, and uh, see enormous uh, inspiration in that. Our financial principles uh, is linked to uh, uh, one of our values, to dare to be different. Uh, our approach is often uh, opposite the common and established of doing things. Uh, we try just to use common sense uh, and uh, trust our own experience. Uh, and uh, what does that mean? Yeah, we try to earn our money before we waste them, or, or, or earn our money before we, we spend them. Um, and um, an example of that is that we financed uh, most of our expansion by our own means. We own the land and the buildings where we operate. We have a uh, very strong solidity and liquidity uh, as a reserve in the background. And um, this gives us uh, enormous financial stability, independence, it gives us flexibility, and it makes it possible for us to have long term, uh, take long term decisions uh, where we can go after our vision, our values, rather than follow the economic swings. In days like this, when the economy is in turmoil, it makes us continue our plan I and mean, even uh, intensify our, our efforts. Um, so um, these values are really very practical. Uh, however, there are also cases when we have not lived up to our expectations, sometimes ethical, sometimes pure leadership or, or uh, human uh, decency mistakes. Uh, what I can see when we fail it's almost always because of value-based reasons. Uh, and we are very firm when there are mishaps linked to areas where we have zero tolerance. In other cases, when we make mistakes, it's more to learn and to go on and correct. The culture of the, and the values is really the inner strength of IKEA. It's a one of the main reasons we can work very decentralized with big responsibility to our people throughout IKEA. And it's also one of the reasons, I believe, why so many people stay so many years in IKEA. And uh, generations, sons and daughters, uh, grandchildren, is coming into IKEA. We see the environment as the foundations for people development and growth to their full potential. And uh, it creates the future growth for IKEA. We say that IKEA grow when people grow. Then uh, just a couple of words around the business idea. I mentioned it be before. Uh, more practically, we call it uh, also democratic design. 
and we have uh, five uh, elements of it, five dimension of it. Uh, good form uh, in IKEA. Uh, we won't want to, you can choose to do ugly or beautiful things, and we try to do it beautiful in our uh, eyes. It's uh, built on the Swedish heritage of uh, modern, natural simplicity, honesty, uh, in an up-to-date way. We try to reach the taste of uh, many, but not all. Uh, we strive for function, uh, with smart solutions from all uh, practical pr uh, perspectives. Uh, we want to have products that are good for everyday use, child-friendly and easy to live with. We uh, want to offer quality, but quality where it matters, uh, based on the knowledge of people use it. And we are building sustainability in through uh, using low-impact material, high uh, material yield, material efficiency, and uh, think through the whole life cycle of a product. Our prices should always be the lowest on the market, and when we do well, sensationally low. On the other hand, we say a low price, but uh, not at any price. It always has to be done in a responsible way. Uh, therefore, we also ban harmful material, often just as a precaution. Um, I believe, I don't, don't know if I'm right, but I think that was the thought behind one of the first uh, Botnik uh, Week prices. Um, we focus on health in the home. We develop children products with rigorous focus on uh, safety, but also take in, in uh, pedagogics uh, and children's development as the main driver of the way the range look. Some of the products actually you have to look from a child's perspective to, to see the, the, the full content of the product and not from an adult's perspective. We develop um, and uh, design all our 10,000 products by ourselves. About 2,000 are new every year. And it's done in Elmhult in, the, in Småland. Uh, in, it's a village. Uh, it's where IKEA once started. The village has 8,000 people, 4,000 work in IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> Some are commuting in. <laughs> and we have an international school there. A lot of people from all over the world. I lived there uh, three times, actually, <laughs> in uh, nine years. And it's a fantastic place global and uh, you see globally you, uh, you go in and work together and out comes the product range. Then a few words about, uh, words about the business model. Uh, IKEA has developed through expanding on the vision uh, and the business idea glued together through our values. The business model has evolved over time as, uh, as our store concept. So what you see in the stores, when you visit the stores, it has not been uh, desktop produced by an agency as a fixed con concept. It, uh, it's easy to believe it, uh, but in reality it's uh, like a metaphysics. It has been built up uh, by component by component that has been added uh, and that has for many years contributed, where good ideas has uh, transferred and uh, bad ideas has fallen off. So uh, the thought of the whole model is the following. That we have a, we, I said we are a home furnishing company. We are passionate about home furnishing uh, and life at home and living. Uh, we see the home as the most important place in the world. And therefore we try to interpret and learn from changes in society, uh, people's life, and how that is influencing the home how technology is influencing, how health concerns are influencing, sustainability, of course, people's income, uh, the architecture of an apartment or a home, or the different life situations. Um, this uh, means that we actually visit hundreds and thousands of homes in every local market and try to understand how people live, how big their kitchen is, what storage needs there are, if they eat in the living room uh, or only watch TV and socialize there. Ho how they hang their curtains. And you maybe you know how many different ways there, there is to do that all over the world. What frustrations people have. Uh, often it is that uh, people have too little space or too much stuff. Much stuff. So storage is a universal uh, need. 
Um, we use this knowledge when we plan our stores and also when we build our uh, product range. And our ambi ambition is really to inspire you and show how a dream of a beautiful home can come through with affordable means. Uh, sometimes we're just changing lighting or a textile or to use the full space in the room. Then we turn into production. Uh, we are interested in the material and the way to use it better. New technologies as well as the conditions of efficient production and distribution because there is the su secret behind the uh, 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 the price quality uh, equation that I talked about. We work close together with our 1200 suppliers all over the world to develop and produce the range. We try to make the suppliers interested to invest in better equipment, higher capacity, better performance and efficiency and therefore we give uh, long-term purchase agreements, often three, four years, so that I as a supplier can organize my production and I dare to take the uh, risk to invest. We participate in financing. It's in design in the and in the cooperation with our suppliers we have a big reason behind the quality price equation. Typically a flow can be like this. We have uh, identified a need in the home. We develop and design the product based on production condition. Then we start with a forest concession, goes into a hypermodern sawmill, goes into an automated layer groove fac factory, goes into a furniture factory in the same location, goes into full pallets with no pallets because they we take away now and we have paper pallets instead, into full containers, today higher, into direct deliveries to the stores, 50% goes direct, uh, where the customers then are uh, contributing in the distribution and in the production by picking things up and assembling them if people choose not to use the services that we also offer the, for the people that are prepared to pay for that. We do our part and the customer do their part. End result, uh, a solid um, uh, chest of drawer, solid wood chest of drawer for 99 euro. But it doesn't stop there because we are not satisfied with this. And there is um, not one product, there is not one uh, solution that cannot be improved. And that's why we continue to lower the prices every year. Also, uh, years like this, when there is inflation and raw material prices goes up, we decide to lower the prices to our customers. And a big part of that is product improvements. And uh, one example is a sofa, Ektop, one of our big sellers where one of the guys in Elmhult saw, isn't that amazing that the sofa has to be so big when it's distributed? And he found a way to flat pack it. And that meant that it takes uh, half the volume. And uh, through that, uh, we could lower the price 25% with the for the customers and the CO2 emissions were reduced dramatically. So the possibilities are endless. And uh, the heroes in Ikea is not the ones that managed to increase the price. They are always seen with skepticism is the one that finds solutions to improve and where the price that can be lowered, that's the heroes. So uh, our interest is now extended further back in the value chain and we have bigger and bigger interest in raw material and alternative raw materials, uh, partly because of the scarcity of raw materials and also the price increases. Uh, uh, but uh, we can also see that the through automatization, the value of a product is higher to a ha higher degree um, a raw material base. Therefore, we research and develop new materials uh, uh, where we use less wood. Uh, boards, for instance, that has one density where all the fittings are sitting, a lower density when there is no fittings, and then a higher density again. And that consumes dramatically less wood and becomes lighter. A lot of that development we do in our 2D industry groups, Swedwood and Swedspan. Yeah, this is a little bit how we are working. Uh, th then we have been growing, as you pointed out, and, and that has been challenging. And it's seldom easy, s easy and we, we face lots of, lots of uh, problems, and uh, we get new insights uh, all the way. Um, one big uh, uh, challenge we faced, it was already in the early 90s, uh, where we got a pretty abrupt uh, awakening because of uh, 
increased media attention around the risk around uh, child labor in the supply chain in certain the countries. Uh, of course, it could not be accepted, and uh, we have simply not been aware. Uh, we teamed up with a lot of, uh, or variety, I would say, of experts to learn more. And um, then uh, we started to put together a program to prevent child labor at suppliers and subcontractors of IKEA. This was a starting point. It was really turmoil uh, at the time, now almost uh, 20 years ago. But it was a starting point and a turning point on a journey with a sequence of development uh, where a lot of good people were involved uh, that led to the introduction of IWAY, IKEA's way of purchasing goods, our code of conduct for suppliers, and uh, with the IKEA way of preventing child labor. IWAY gives the minimum requirements for social and working conditions with a purpose to uh, work in the best interest of children, the worker, and the environment. Uh, it's uh, based on uh, the fundamental rights uh, at work, the ILO Declaration from 98, and the 10 principles of the UN Global Compact. IWAY is, is today an uh, integrated part of the cooperation with our suppliers, and it's very close tied to the business. Um, if IWAY conditions are not fulfilled following special procedure with room for corrective actions, the business cooperation will be stopped. We are pres uh, at present at the suppliers on a daily basis, and we have many hundred specialists working together with our suppliers uh, in the field of developing the IWAY performance further. We na never just face, uh, tr uh, trust a paper or a document. We always verify in reality with our so sources and independent sources. We see many great things that are happening as a result of the highway demands, and that triggers a new way of thinking and acting. So far, we have documented 150,000 improvements at our suppliers to the benefit of everybody involved. However, the journey continues, and the awareness is increasing, and the standards are rightly increasing. So we are const constantly learn, we sharpen the demands, and we address new issues. However, I'm very proud about the development the last 10, 12 years, and that the commitment in our organization, and also today among our suppliers, is uh, higher than it has ever been before. It, and that also leads us to go beyond our uh, supply chain. And uh, I think we have a, a, a quite unique approach in that. Uh, through the program that we today found uh, through the IKEA Foundation. You can Google more about it, uh, uh, but basically we focus on the people that has the least in the world. And uh, we have four different fields. Um, for, uh, we call it a place, co um, a place called home for the, all the people that don't even have a place uh, that is their home today. Uh, and this is the newest part where we have now b made a big uh, uh, agreement together with the UNHCR. It's about uh, a healthy start in life, and it's about nutrition and uh, breastfeeding and uh, immunization. It's about children's right uh, to quality education, and it's about sustainable, sustainable economy in the families, mainly through women empowerment. And uh, here we work very close together also with the UNICEF, uh, Save the Children, UNDP, and now also uh, UNHCR. More than uh, 10 million people in 20,000 villages in India is currently in the various programs. And uh, UNICEF estimated that 100 million children together with their families will benefit from the total of the programs by 2015, uh, when we include the immunization part, which is... Uh, in a, a number of people, the, the biggest. These partnerships uh, has developed and emerged over more than 10 years, and also there with learning on the fields in the villages, together with uh, the partners where we try to have the same value base, the same openness, how we could do it better in the future. Um, this year, uh, IKEA Foundation uh, donates more than 100 million euro for the programs, uh, more than doubled since last uh, year. One smaller program, but also significant, is that we do together with Columbia University, aimed at spreading best practice in making the funds uh, uh, have the best possible uh, um, utilization in the villages with uh, learning from uh, programs in Africa that 
is now taken into four districts in, in India. Um, a very special partnership I find is also where we manage to engage our customers to participate. And one example of that is the One Euro is a Fortune program that we run every uh, Christmas since a few years. Uh, and uh, it's uh, so that for every uh, soft toy that's, uh, that the customer buy, we donate a uh, euro. And uh, this year we believe that it will be 10 million euro. Uh, and uh, that goes to uh, smaller programs across the world. Uh, we have about 40 uh, of these programs that we, we uh, currently are working with. So out of this uh, challenge with the child labor in the early 90s, uh, grew a development where we are still just in the beginning, we beginning and we uh, uh, are talking more about that because we hope that also others will join forces. We can learn and we can also contribute what we have learned. Uh, we are uh, also working more and more, as I mentioned, about the raw material um, and with the importance of sustainable forestry. We are a big purchaser of wood. We have uh, 17 own foresters that do nothing else than together with WWF to work uh, in developing more sustainable and responsible forest management. We actively combat illegal logging and uh, we have close to 100% chain of custody in our flow today. And we are working to bring up the, the certified part of the wood cons uh, consumption may, to a large degree through our own resources. In India and Pakistan, we are working together with uh, uh, WWF and uh, local NGOs uh, and a few other companies, uh, among others H&M, um, to educate farmers to grow cotton in a more sustainable way. Where we have 80,000 uh, farmers now in um, 60 in, in India and 20 in um, Pakistan that uh, use um, uh, half the water and a third less fertilizers and pesticides. And with uh, better practice, they uh, actually get a better crop and thereby higher income for their family. And by 2015, we hope that uh, and believe that 100% uh, of our own supply chain will be from this Better Cotton initiative. Parallel, we are working on cellulose-based fibers uh, to blend in or to use uh, entirely to be less dependent on cotton in the long run. Um, Bruce mentioned uh, that you wanted to know a little about how what it is like going into challenging markets, um, and not least challenging from an ethical point of view. And um, we do not ma uh, mind going into challenging markets, as long as there are no sanctions from the United Nations. We believe that we and other international companies can be a driver for change. We are firm on be uh, behaving and conducting our business in an ethical and correct way, independent of where we are. But there are, um, have been situations where that, that has not happened. And uh, in those cases, we act in a very firm way. We have zero tolerance to corruption and other misbehavior. Instead, we have the patience to wait, to, for instance, to obtain a license to open a new store in the right way, even though we are impatient to open. Sometimes it can take us eight to 10 years to go through the procedure, but so much bigger the satisfaction when we finally can open. However, sometimes it goes wrong. And uh, since many years we do business in Russia. Russia is a country with fantastic opportunities, both being rich in raw material, suitable for production of, of IKEA products, and with many fantastic pe people with a need to furnish their home. Uh, as in uh, many of these cases, we started with purchasing of IKEA products for export, establishment of production units, and from 2000, opening IKEA stores, and adjacent to them, we put um, shopping centers. Uh, however, the development of our shopping center company uh, was too fast, uh, and the uh, organization was uh, not enough anchored in the IKEA values, uh, not being a core business. Um, rules were bent, uh, business ru was run too fast and uh, sometimes not in the IKEA way. And all in all that happened in the Russian business environment. Um, now we have had a, a couple of years of correcting and to come back to normal standards. Uh, or our Russian uh, consumers love us. Uh, 
uh, we have really field stores and, and shopping centers. But internally, we had a lot of to, uh, to improve. We also had lost some of the trust from various authorities, trust that we now are rebuilding. Today, we have learned the lessons. Uh, we see that we are again are on a good way to become well respected in the country. And uh, we have very good support from the Russian government in uh, solving the issues that have been remaining. Among other things, we just opened uh, our store in Ufa uh, a couple of months ago and Samara uh, a month ago. There are many learnings to be drawn from this, uh, but the most important is how important the values are for the, so the base of the bis uh, business, especially in challenging markets. Uh, rounding off, uh, yeah, we are constantly on our way into the future. Last year I went to India and visited a number of the villages where we run the programs uh, with UNICEF, Save the Children in UNDP. I had the opportunity to meet a lot of uh, people in the villages, uh, often in Uttar Pradesh and uh, other of the more poor uh, regions. I talked to the women and to the children and to the teachers and the district collectors, uh, their husbands. And, but I asked uh, the women, what, what's the most important for, for you in your life? They all had the same answer. Uh, it's my children. And it's my home. In a way, universal uh, answers. I think most people would say the same. Uh, and at the end of the day, we are just uh, people, all of us, with similar needs, but living under uh, different circumstances in different places. The home is uh, uh, the most important place in the world. And it uh, gradually becomes the fingerprint of the people living there. Our idea is to enable as many people as possible to create the home environment that's good for them and their family. It's also a good business to be in, because as long as there are people, there will be a need for home furnishings. <laughs> it's more or less universal. We believe that we can play a small, but uh, hopefully also significant role in creating a better everyday life. Um, our current strategy we call Growing IKEA together and it includes four uh, main cornerstones. Of course, to do the home furnishing and the service and the stores better to our customers, better quality and lower prices, better e-commerce. Uh, we will continue to uh, integrate our value chain further. We focus on our people, value, leadership, culture, and we focus on sustainability because we see sustainability as a driver of change. We have a strong financial base. It may be conservative, even old fashions, but it has given us the resources to choose our way and make long-term investments for the future. We will continue to be humanistic, a small company in our minds and hearts. When I started, we were 4,000 people. Uh, we had 18 stores. Uh, and now we are more but we want to keep this small company feeling. We care about each other, our customers, and our, about the earth. When, when we do well, and if we do well, we will continue to grow and develop, uh, but in a pace where we are driven by our vision and our values, and we are evolving our business uh, model in a good way. We know uh, that a successful business is possible to combine with a responsible way of performing our business. We will be challenged, we will make mistakes, but we will also learn and find new and better way because we are only in the beginning. Thank you for listening.